Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Concorp. We are in a bit of a hurry here because we have received intelligence. The war is about to potentially come to an end, and we got some intelligence from a certain swine. Isn't that right, Scar? Deep within G Team's base, I have made contact in their sewers with the swine of the base. These creatures, Cub, have been enslaved within G Team's base as seats. They sit on them, they don't treat them well, they barely feed them. And they have turned and they have told us that G Team and Star Team are planning a counterattack on us after the war has concluded. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. So, this also cor corroborates with the intelligence we've received from some drone chatter that we've picked up around Star Team mm -hmm. Base. So, we got to shut some stuff down before this war gets going. We got to shut some stuff down. And we've actually started doing that here at Concorp. We shut the fountain down. Fountain is now. Turned off. I think Joe Hills was in here earlier, like frolicking about. So we had it would have been have, had to have been cleaned anyway. So yeah, we had to drain it's it. Disgusting. Just, there is green slime all over this thing. Yep. And there is only one person to blame, and that's Joe. Shame on him. Yep. Yep. We got to kick him out of Concorp. We got to kick him out of of the conglomerate. Like we trusted him at once, but not again. Not after this this desecration of the fountain. My goodness. My goodness. Oh, it's horrible. We're going to have to call the pool boy here to clean this play whole thing up. Disgusting. Yep, but not only that, Scar. <sighs> mm -hmm. We're shutting down all of Concorp. See this? Factory has been closed. We've closed down the smelter. We've closed down the tree farm. All this barred off. No entry available. Oh. Um, I mean, you wouldn't even know that there was a secret hidden cub base back here. Yep, yep. Wait that's been abandoned now, so we're leaving everything behind here on the main Hermitcraft Island in, in anticipation of both sides turning against us. So where are we going to hide out? Now that the shops are closed or we're about to close those down, Concorp's all shut down, we got to find somewhere to hide. Yep, yep. I think I think maybe the golf course, that's that's a far location, a far off location, mm. and has all mm -hmm. the amenities we need. Oh, I like that. We could be swimming, we could be playing tennis, golf. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. There's plenty of food and resources. And we can spin it as, you know, just a couple guys successful in life. And we retired to a life of leisure and golf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have enough diamonds to last us for all eternity, basically. So <laughs> why not? Why not just retire? Uh, we do have a few other things to shut down first, though, don't we? Yep. We got a few more things to shut down. And then we got to hit that broadcast because this war is heating up. Will Scar got everything packed up from the bricklayer's shop. Now we just need to close the doors, put the signs up to let the hermits know that we are out of business. Yep, we got everything packed up in these boxes. We got chests in here empty. Uh, we're going to leave some cake in here. That's probably going to be rotten by the time we get back, though, I have to say. Yeah, you're putting all that there. I'll just show everybody. Everything is gone, and yeah, we're shutting it down. Shutting it down. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I'll put a sign here that says closed. And there we go. Shut down. Now let's hit the rest of them. Everything is closed down, and we're all in the clear now, Cub. That's right. All our shops closed down, Concorp shut down, and man. The emergency vehicle is ready to go in the back. These two teams think they can pull a fast one on us. Not, <laughs> they have no idea us. that Scar right here made a flying machine that's going to work. The viewer said it's going to work. It's going to be amazing. That's going to be great. It's going to be great. I had a poll, and they said it was going to work in the poll. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, they're, they're going to be right. They're, it's going to work. We're going to get a clean getaway, no deaths, no damage, all diamonds. Someday, we're going to have to repay those pigs up in G-Team's tower. You have yeah. to give them something, yep. something. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, when, when do you think these teams are going to start fighting? they got to start fighting soon, you think. I mean, they've been, they've been beating for, like, what, 20 minutes now? I saw a llama 
cavalcade entering star team base just a moment ago so i think things are starting to heat up a little bit here for sure g team i think i saw a plane land on the top of the building maybe maybe but i know things are starting to cub what's that we're rolling oh my god turn it off turn it off Would it then become a super duper weapon? That's the question we need to ask ourselves, Scar. I think so. Interesting development over here. There is lava and bridges being built over at Star Team Base. False holding it down. Apparently, these were built by G Team. Turtles coming off the board. Yep. Turtles coming off the board. What is the score right now? Oh and my gosh. Sweet buttered crumpets. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, if the if the apocalypse comes, Scar. I want to be in a bunker made of zombie Cleo's face. We thought Jevin would might be like crying for mercy from the gas cannon here, but in fact, it is mercy crying for I, Jevin. Pull the lever! Oh, jeez! Oh, are we under get attack? On the boat. Quick, we, get in the boat! Get in the boat! Go, get in the boat! Go, go! go break go. it! Break it! Break it! Break it! Break it! We're out of here! Go! Go! We're go! 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 Oh, the land boat! The land oh. boat! <laughs> no cub. Got to rely on the land boats now, Scar. That's all we got. That's all we got. Scar, it's good to be retired, man, and it's good we re we formulated that plan beforehand because, whew, man, that was a close call out there. It was a close call, and it's nice to be in retirement here. I have hit the lengths. I have hit the pool. I've done all the activities. Now I'm excited to start doing some building around here, improve the facilities even more. Yeah, I'm looking to go play some tennis. I've played a couple rounds. We played a couple rounds of golf already with some diamond blocks and stuff. So I mean, that was an exciting <laughs> round. That was just really to let the other hermits know that uh, we won. Yeah, yeah. By the way, want to mention as well, uh, in case the other hermits are, are watching out there, we did privatize the golf course, so now you can only play if you're a member because, you know, we, we just we, we wanted to shut it down, but, you know, we wanted to also, you know, allow people to experience this wonderful course, but uh, we need the diamonds first. We need the diamonds first. And there are some people with memberships that are allowed to come out and play, and that's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Asuma, Impulse, and Jevin are all members, so they can come out here and play whenever they want for free because uh, they've already paid the diamonds. But this is sort of our retirement plan, you know, maintaining the golf course, improving the facilities. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is this is retirement plan right here. So what are our first projects here to improve the facilities even more? Ooh, yeah. So we need we need a locker room is what we need. Yep, I'm going to work on that. Like we said in our last episode, I have not made a place that we can use the restroom here. And how we have been using the restroom, don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we also have uh, course construction going on. Uh, we've already renovated the front nine, but the back nine still needs some holes to be built. So we need holes, I think, 13 through 18. Five more Ooh. holes to be built. I can't wait for some more links. Is that the right term? Yeah. I'm learning my golf link. Yes, yep. I'm learning my golf terms yeah. you got it you got it perfect yeah so we got to build those those links up we got to build those holes up mm -hmm. anything else anything else what else do we need around here hmm uh we do have interest from ijevin to host a tournament so maybe like over in this section we could have like a little like tournament reception area type thing perhaps oh yeah that would be really cool that could be cool so maybe something like that uh and other yeah, little party grounds i love it yeah yeah definitely Definitely. And then anything else you can think of, Scar? Like anything we'd might... Oh, we need toilets. Toilets. Yeah, you already said that, right? Yep. Okay. Toilets are going to okay. go. Toilets are going to go. So I got to go spec out some toilets, you know, tap the porcelain, see if it's good quality. You yeah. got to hit the shovel out there to start working on the links and, uh, yeah, continue to improve the place. Okay. Let's do it, man. So, guys, it's been nice being out here, being retired, having all the diamonds we could ever possibly want, and... Yeah, basically we've been, you know, eating cake out here, been watching the sunset, we've just been lounging around out here, but we do have some work to do on the course today, 
And before we get to that, I want to check on the shootout, which ended on February 3rd. See who won that. And it looks like, yes, we won it. <laughs> because we were the only entrant. That is why we won it. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Let me just grab this sign here. And so, yeah, we'll put ourselves on the avenue of champions. Put our head down there along with our score of 14. Uh, and, of course, you know, we, we made the prize, so we'll just keep that stuff for ourselves. And, yeah, we also, we want to have a contest out here at the driving range probably, like, once a month. So, for the month of February, I think I'm just going to recycle this shootout uh, contest, basically. Keep the same prizes. And, yeah, we'll just have the same thing, uh, yeah, happen here again. So, we'll just uh, sort of recycle the shootout. And we'll have this one end on March 1st. Hopefully, some more hermits will participate because a lot of hermits were sort of engrossed and totally encapsulated by the Civil War that was going on uh, during the uh, the previous shootout, this month's shootout, or last month's shootout, I should say. Um, so hopefully this month we'll have a little bit more participation. Um, but yeah, I'll just go ahead and put this right in here. And yeah, we'll restart the shootout for this next month. So this shootout will run through March 1st, so let other hermits know, come and participate here at the driving range. So with the driving range competition now set, we are now ready to head out to the golf course and we're going to do some major work out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the 13th hole tee box, the fairway, and the green complete. Uh, we still have details like the maps we need to add. We need to add the flag showing the hole number. Uh, and we also need to add the bunkers. But for the most part, it's complete. So this is a par 5. It's 542 blocks long. So you can see the very long fairway right here. Uh, the way you play this hole, basically your first shot lands somewhere in this region here. Uh, and then once you land here... Uh, there's going to be a couple of bunkers around here. So, for instance, like there'll be a bunker right here. There'll be a bunker back there. Uh, or maybe a lake uh, <laughs> where we fell into the ravine with all those creepers and such, uh, which I showed in a previous episode. Uh, and then you play your second shot from that area over to around the Mesa Arch area. Uh, so I made a big Mesa Arch here. And you can either play, you know, through the arch to like here or actually over the arch to the sort of expanded fairway section over here. And then your third shot goes into the green, which I sort of connected up to the fairway with this, like, pathway up the hill here. And the green is sort of, like, up on this... almost like this uh, peninsula, I guess. Or up on this uh, plateau, is what I call it. Um, and so this is where the hole is at. So, yeah, that is that. And that is the 13th hole. And again, we got the fairway done, we got the green done, and we got the tee box done, but there's still bunkers we need to add, and we need to sort of clean up the lake a little bit on this side, the lake down there, the lake down there. So we have to come through again and, you know, sort of refine the hole a little bit, polish the edges a little bit, but for the most part, that is now the bulk of the hole is done. Uh, now we're going to move on to the 14th hole. So the 14th hole is going to be a little bit of a different hole. It's going to be a par 4. Uh, this hole is going to be 384 blocks long. And by the way, I just want to show you guys real quick here. I'll pop into the nether. And I'll show you we actually have got a new tunnel here. So this tunnel is 
an ice boat road, so you can see this way, ninth tee and fifth tee. This way is the first tee and the nether hub. And I can just quickly scoot down here and show you guys real quick that this does indeed connect up to the tunnel that goes to the hub. So right here is actually the tunnel that goes back to the nether hub. So we can actually speed on down this back to the hub real quick. And there we go. Yep, you can see. Yep, we're at the hub now. <laughs> so that's where that thing leads. Uh, and then it sort of it sort of forms like a big circle, or actually a big uh, number eight, if you can imagine that. Uh, let me just get off of this here. Excuse me. Thank you. There we go. Got to make sure we get this properly on there. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so it's, it forms like a big number eight, so you can go to any, uh, like every five holes you can sort of travel, fast travel to essentially, in case you die or in case uh, you want to play a specific hole again. So... That's a pretty useful feature, so we got this portal connecting to the 14th hole tee box. And it also helps me to get out here and build this thing, because this does require a lot of resources to transport from the, uh, from the main Hermitcraft Island and from, uh, from elsewhere in the world. So that helps as well with that. Anyways, let's take a look at what this 14th hole is going to do. So if we fly on this way, it's going to sort of start off with the fairway here. Fairway is going to run down across this, and across this river here. So this is going to be like the primary landing area in this spot here off the tee box. So you're going to have to avoid the river and also avoid the lake on the left. Uh, and then you'll play your second shot over this mound here, just to the left of this big mound. And we'll probably lower this small mound a little bit so we can actually see the green, which is going to be right in this section right here. So this is where the flag is going to be, so there's obviously the green. We'll have like a nice natural green here sort of inset into the ground here. And I'm also planning to have sort of like a run-up fairway here, uh, which is going to be sort of an island, but it's going to be bigger than what is currently here. So we're probably going to need to connect up this island, that island, and that island into one like sort of giant island, and also probably lower down these islands at least a little bit. Uh, so that's sort of what this whole area is going to look like. So it's going to have a big fairway here, maybe with like a, a bunker or something on this side, and then, yeah, the green right here. So it should be a pretty fun hole, should have a lot of challenge, you know, you don't want to go too far because we'll have, you know, obviously water over the green, and you don't want to go to the left because there's water, uh, and yeah, you don't want to end up in the uh, the river off the tee either, so that's another hazard you have to avoid. But anyways, that's the plan for this hole, so a lot of work to do here, a lot of terraforming we have to do, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so we got the 14th hole now complete, let's just fly over this, and again we still need to add in the bunkers and a few details here, but for the most part this is how the fairway is going to be, so we got fairway right here, split by the river, and then we also uh, have the fairway sort of turned to the left here, and on the second shot you go over the water again to this area, and then the flag is right down here, right in the middle of the green, as it always is. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that. Uh, we are going to add like a bunker in front of this hole, so it's going to be protected in the front by a deep bunker here, super deep bunker here, and also by the ocean in the back in case you go a little bit too far. So it's going to be tough to get close to the flag here, uh, although you could, I guess, aim for the, the hill up here, or you could aim over here uh, into the fairway area right here. I'm also thinking about putting a bunker right in here, so it'll be kind of like a medium depth bunker to sort of penalize players who, uh, you know, might not make it, hey, there was a dolphin jumping over there, 
uh, who might not make it, uh, you know, quite as far up here. So that way you can't just, you know, automatically, you know, play the second shot into the middle of this area and then go straight to the hole to get like an easy, easy par. You want to have players, you know, focus like into this section specifically, I think would be a pretty good, pretty good, uh, choice design wise to do. So we may add another bunker in the middle of that fairway somewhere, but anyways, that's the gist of the 14th hole right there. Uh, now we're going to move on to the 15th hole. So the 15th hole is going to start right here. This is where the tee box is going to be. And we're also going to have another uh, ace competition. So if you get a hole in one on this hole, uh, we'll have you win a prize, like maybe a beacon or maybe a conduit or something like that. Uh, because this is actually going to be a par three. And that is going to be the flag right there where those uh, lime terracotta blocks are. So if we make our way over here... Uh, the hole is going to be a par 3, 194 blocks long. So one of the longer par 3s we have. But we're going to have the hole right here. And I'm thinking right now we have probably like the green in this section like this. Sort of going around here. Coming out here. And then probably coming back in like this in the front. And we want to have like a bunker here probably shortened to the right. So a bunker right here down this way, and then a bunker on the uh, on the, the right side as well over here, like where this is here, roughly. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have two bunkers on either side, which will be pretty deep, and then maybe like a fairway, a little bit of a fairway running all the way out to probably here or so, where this lake is. I think that would be a good choice. Uh, so, yeah, that is going to be the 15th hole. So, yeah, kind of a long par 3, but, yeah, should be... Really fun to uh, to play, provide a good challenge, because if you go too far, you're sunk. <laughs> if you go too short, then you don't make it up this giant hill right here. Uh, so yeah, it should be a fun hole. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started on this one, and I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the 15th hole is now complete, and here's what the tee box is looking like. Had to make it a little bit longer than normal. Just because we want to add probably a concession stand and a ace prize in case you get a hole in one here on this hole. Because this is the only par 3 on this back 9. Um, so we might actually have to make the tee box a little bit bigger. Like expand it out this way or maybe expand it out this way a little bit. But that'll come at a later time. Obviously we still need to get the maps and everything. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you what the basic hole will look like. So if we get up here, you can see... Yeah, there we go. Got the fairway here, green here, and then on each side, on the left side over here, there's going to be a massive bunker here, as indicated by the sign. So it's going to go all the way down to right over there. And then on the right side, same thing, a pretty large bunker here. It's also going to be kind of deep, and it also kind of like circles around the back side of the green a little bit as well. Uh, so that is the 15th hole there. And we also will probably need a pathway leading off the back side of this green, probably coming down to here, and then coming around the bunker here over to the 16th hole tee box, which will be right here. So the 16th hole is going to be teeing off in this direction. Uh, this is going to be a par 4, 383 blocks long. And this is the first hole that sort of like now starts to head back toward the clubhouse. Uh, so this is now heading back toward the clubhouse. We'll probably have the fairway start about here or so. You'll have to come to the left of this sort of grove of trees. Or it would be cool if we had the fairway like come down this way. You could sort of bomb it over the trees to get a little bit closer to the flag, which is going to be that pillar right up there. And this sort of narrows as you get closer to the hole. So you can see it sort of drops off pretty steeply in certain spots around here. But this is where the green's going to be. Sort of, uh, yeah, has trees sort of surrounding it. And we'll probably have like a bunker... Maybe on this right side here, so makes it a little bit more challenging. But the main thing is this neck here is super narrow, so we're going to keep that and keep the fairway sort of on this, like, neck line right here as it sort of comes in this way. So that is going to be the 16th hole, so let's go ahead and get started on it right now.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got the fairway tee and green done for the 16th hole. Let me just show you what it's looking like. So if we make our way over here, you can see fairway starts right here. And then we have to, on the tee, you have to throw it over the lake here to the left of the trees. And we're also going to add a sort of elongated bunker uh, on this side right here. I think I have a sign here. Yeah, long shallow bunker right here. We'll be going down this side penalize any tee shots on the left uh, so yeah that is that uh, and then yeah your second shot is going to be played from roughly like right in this region here to the green uh, and if you go a little bit too far we also are going to have a bunker right here and there's also like a little lake over here to catch errant shots this is a naturally generated lake by the way um, and then if we make our way up to the green green's right here it's a little bit of an elongated green and we're going to have a bunker along this this uh, this right-hand side here. So it's going to go probably like from this point, uh, back here, back in this section, and then forward to about here or so. So, yeah, that is the 16th hole right there. And, of course, we got the, the chime in there. So that thing is now done. Uh, and then we'll also need a pathway from the 16th green down to the 17th tee. So let's talk about hole number 17. So the tee box, as I just said, will be right here. It's going to be facing the frozen ocean biome out here. So this is the view we're getting, which is a pretty nice view. And the way you play this hole is basically you have to launch over that giant iceberg spike right there. So you have to launch directly over this. And if you do that and have sufficient distance, you should hit the fairway. Uh, by the way, this hole is going to be a par 5. It's going to be 480 blocks long, which is pretty short compared to like for instance hole number nine is over 100 blocks longer than this and that's a par five as well uh, but you're gonna land in this section near the red sand then you'll launch your second shot toward this giant iceberg over here and basically the fairway is gonna be coming down this way and then sort of drift left connecting up with this island and then going on to the hole which is gonna be right where that pillar of orange terracotta is uh, so it's gonna be a pretty straightforward hole you will be able to hit the green in two shots uh, if you play two really good shots in here. So you could make an eagle on this hole, potentially, which is two under par for one hole. Um, but yeah, the only thing that's really a threat here is the water. Uh, but if you can avoid that, it should be a pretty straightforward hole. Um, and so, yeah, it should be pretty cool. This whole like, green area is going to be sort of protected by an iceberg, which is a little bit different. Uh, and yeah, a lot different from the rest of the course, which has been, you know, Mesa on this entire back nine so far. So... Yeah, should be a pretty cool hole, so let's go ahead and get started building it. Seventeenth hole fairway, tee and green now all complete. So here is the tee box we're on right here, uh, heading out in this direction toward the frozen ocean biome. And you can see we have a little bit of fairway peeking out right there, and it sort of curves back behind the giant iceberg right here. And so the ideal shot is actually right over this iceberg here. Uh, so if I just fly down, I should be able to show you how this works. So yeah, you'll have a fairway down here. You can either throw it to this portion or this portion up here. And then the fairway continues on up here. There's a little bit of a hill here you have to go over. Uh, there's going to be a bunker right here. Right there, deep bunker, which is going to be pretty deep. So you don't want to go in there on your second shot, which shouldn't really be a problem if you throw it over the iceberg first. Uh, this should all should be able to throw it over all this on your second shot. Uh, we'll probably also have another bunker right here where this lake is right now. And then it sort of flattens out in this section. Uh, so your second shot should end up somewhere between about right here and the green area. So like right in this section would be like the ideal spot for it. 
and then you can throw it right to the hole. And keep in mind, this is a par five, so it's going to be a fairly easy hole. Uh, we are going to probably add a bunker where that sign is and where this sign is here on this side of the green, just to sort of protect the green just a little bit. Uh, and players might also end up on the the iceberg itself. And then the hole is right here, sort of nestled into the iceberg, uh, tucked in behind it here. So that is the 17th hole right there. And we have this little extra area over here just to catch shots that go a little too far, so it's not too penalizing. Like, you have a little bit of leeway here, uh, so you can try and play pretty aggressive here if you want to. But if you go too far, then you're waterbound. Uh, although you could end up on the ice, too. Like, you could end up on this and be fine, because uh, that is not a penalty. Uh, but anyways, that is that. Now let's talk about the hole 18. And you see this lime terracotta up there? That is where the 18th hole tee box is going to go. So... It's going to be an epic tee shot up here. Probably going to be the best tee shot on the whole course, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, right in here, or maybe not in here. Let's see if we can get up here. There we go. So, yeah, right here, this is going to be the view out. Uh, we're going to be going in this direction, so the fairway is going to start like at that island right here for hole number 18. And hole number 18 is going to also be a par 5, so we have a, two par 5s back-to-back -to, -back to end the course. Uh, so this is going to be a par 5. It's going to be, let's see, 582 blocks long. It's going to start here, obviously, on top of this iceberg. And then you will eventually make your way down here. Fairway is going to start right there. It's going to turn to the left over here. So we got some good bunker spots right there. Fairway will probably be all in here. It'll come this way. Through this whole area here, your third shot, or your second shot should land like in this area. And then you should be able to play like a wedge, or just throw it to the green, which is going to be right here. And this is where the flag is going to be. And you can see, we are now back at the start. So that is hole number one, tee box right there. So, we have come basically full circle all the way around uh, for this course. Like, we went around an entire ocean biome with this course. Uh, so... That is going to be hole number 18. Looks like a good spot for a bunker right here, potentially. If we have the green, like, in this section. Right here. Yeah, could be cool. Uh, and we're also going to go over the river here at the very end here. So that'll be a cool little feature to have. Anyways, guys, time to start on hole number 18 now. The final hole of the course. So let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at the view from this 18th tee box, guys. Wow. So you can see, like, some plains and some forest over here. You can see the frozen ocean. You can see hole 17, a large portion of hole 17, the mesa beyond that, and some more frozen ocean icebergs out in this direction. So great views up here from the 18th hole. And we also have an easy way to get up here for players. So we have a bubble column right here. This actually starts down here at the 17th hole green. So if we make our way down here... Let's say you finish the 17th hole, you walk off the green in this direction, come through a tunnel this way, turn left, turn right, and then at the end here you have your bubble column. So you just step on in this, and then once you get to the top, voila, you're at the very top and ready to play your final tee shot, basically, because this is the final hole. So let's just go ahead and jump off here and fly down this way. Uh, by the way, off of the tee box, you do land in the water, so I don't have to worry about fall damage here. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the fairway over here for the 18th hole. So yeah, you can see it starts here right in front of the water. Uh, the typical landing area for this 18th hole is right about here or so. And I think we're going to put in some bunkers here to sort of uh, protect this area, protect this fairway a little bit. Uh, so we'll probably put like a bunker right here. It seems like a pretty... 
pretty good spot here with the lake being sort of like a natural depression anyway. So we'll put like a shallow bunker here, probably a shallow bunker over there as well on the other side. And we also need like trees around here in certain areas. So yeah, we want to make sure that, yeah, there's like trees to basically um, prevent players from just going straight, basically. Um, so we'll put a lot of trees down here. Uh, and then, of course, there are like some lakes and stuff around here. Maybe we'll put a bunker here where this lake is, for instance. That seems like a good spot. Uh, and then, yeah, basically you play your second shot from back there over this river here. So you got to go over this river, which really doesn't come into play that much. Um, but, yeah, it is there, so you do have to avoid it. Uh, and then, basically, from there, we have a bunch of other, like, small lakes you need to avoid. And your second shot should land, like, somewhere in here, roughly. And then you play your third shot to the green, because this is a par 5. And, yeah, you can also see we're fairly close to the end of the course here, because that is the clubhouse up there, ladies and gentlemen. So we got the clubhouse. Uh, you can see the Avenue of Champions. There's part of the driving range right there. That's the 150 sign for the driving range. So we're pretty close to the end here. Uh, so basically, your third shot, you're coming in here, you're either going to hit an iron or a wedge into the green. That's sort of the uh, the premise of this. And of course, we're going to have some various bunkers in various locations, like right here, for instance, will be a good spot for a bunker. There's also this little river right here before the, uh, the green. And speaking of the green, let's go ahead and get on up here. Here is what the green is looking like. So yeah, you can see what this is like right here. And of course, we're going to have some bunkers around here as well. Probably one there and maybe one in the back. So guys, there we go. The par 5 18th hole, 582 blocks long, coming into shape and nearly complete. Although we do still have quite a bit of work to still do on the course, including things like, you know, making the bunkers properly and also doing things like making bridges, concession stands, paths, scoreboards, etc. And also, you know, putting you know, the banners on each hole and also mapping each hole and, you know, putting all the item frames on the tee the box and putting the yardage. We got a ton still to do here, guys, but we made an enormous amount of progress. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing me time lapse build the fairways, the greens and the tee boxes of all the holes. Uh, so, yeah, that is uh, the majority of the course now complete. So please do leave a like if you enjoyed, guys. Would really appreciate it. Like I said, a huge amount of work went into this episode. Uh, but I hope you guys did enjoy. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.